Welcome back everyone. Today I'll be carrying on with my fluffy cat and we will be focusing on the first ear. Um, don't be scared, it's going to be okay. A full list of materials I'm using is in the description below. If you don't have anything on the list, don't worry, similar colours will work too. If you miss part one, you can also find a link of it in the description below. So let's get going. I think cat ears can be one of the most challenging things to draw and in this video what I'm going to try and do is just show you and talk you through how I create cat ears using one particular method of drawing um, and this method is purely just it's just drawing it's drawing the shapes um, I've got a few little tools that I'm using um, but it's just one technique that I use to create uh, fluffy ears like this the the biggest thing to remember is not to be scared and that might sound a little bit strange but when you look at an ear like this the the first thing that you can see is um all of the detail all of the layering you've got that light color over the top of the darker base how am i going to get that in um you know and and then it all just gets a little bit overwhelming and then you know uh, your drawing becomes not as enjoyable as you you know you would like it to so using little tools like the scotch magic tape that we used in the first video can be incredibly useful um, so what I've done so far is I've just had a, got a base down of a colour, a darker colour on the base of the ear and then I've started to kind of bring in some of the shapes, the main shapes of the clumps of the ear. And then using the Scotch Magic Tape, I can then go over the top of it and just start to create a few extra shapes, some of these sort of stray hairs. Now this is very, very early on in the building of the ear. Um, I like to create quite a lot of texture to begin with that I can then work on and work around um, because it just gives a it gives a really really good base and then you can go in and you can work in with all of your shadows you can create the layering effect uh, and it works incredibly well so you can see here that I'm kind of working over the entire ear with the scotch tape um, and I've created all of these little opportunities basically to be able to then go in and start to build the shadows build the shaping of the uh, of the ear um, and make it look a little bit more realistic right from the start now this is a a, a process that takes time um, color pencil is all about the layering and this is all about the layering um, you know building up these sorts of shapes and this kind of detail uh, you, you know in in something like a cat ear does take quite a lot of time but it's incredibly enjoyable um, and you can see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is sort of building the colour. I use my putty eraser all of the time just to lift a few of those highlights out. We need to keep the highlights clean um, and they get, you know, we, we kind of cover them with a little bit of pigment and then we need to sort of soften it off. And that's what I use my putty eraser for. When you see me using it, it's not because I've made a mistake. It's because I've seen another opportunity to add a highlight or a stray hair or something like that or keep my, my paper just a little bit clean, my highlights a little bit clean. So it's bit of pencil, bit of eraser, bit of pencil, bit of eraser, a little bit like the hokey cokey, um, you know, and, and I know that people have kind of, when they've spent, I don't know, half an hour adding a load of pigment and they say, right, <laughs> go in with your eraser and take it all off. They kind of look at me as if I'm a total and utter mad woman. But it works and it works really, really well. So, um, it's all about building it up slowly. You can see I'm coming in with lighter coloured pencils. I think this is the light fast um, fossil grey here. It's one of my favourite colours actually. It's a really, really beautiful pinky grey and it's very softly pigmented. So it's a great one for um, blending and smoothing. We're working on pastel matte as we know on this piece so it can be a little bit grainy so finding those sort of pencils to help smooth things out is re is a really really good idea now when it comes to drawing fluffy uh, fur like this that's sort of layered over the top of a darker background the one of the challenges is to make it look realistic which might sound a, a bit daft but um that is one of the biggest challenges um, and what a, a lot of the time happens is that we end up with something that looks like a fluffy ear but we've got quite big sort of strands of hair that come out so they don't really look like hair they look more like um big strands of pencil marks coming out on the side of the ear um now the trick 
is well, it's not a trick. Um, it's it's to work on your shading. Um, your shading is one of the most important parts of creating a piece like this. Uh, so really, really look at where the light's coming from. Look at, um, you know, the, the shading on each, not each individual hair, because we're not drawing each individual hair, but each clump of hair. Look how, uh, you know, we haven't just got one stripe of white for a, for a lighter coloured hair. It kind of stops. It maybe has like a shine in the middle. It maybe has like a bit more shadow on the base of it. And then it might come sort of down and, um, you know, kind of, kind of taper off at the end. That is what's really, really, really important when you're drawing something like this. And the problem is you can't do it right from the beginning. You know, you want to do it right from the beginning, but you can't. You have to have that pigment down. You have to have that base, um, you know, the, the, the basic outline, the basic sort of shapes and everything like that to be able to get, you know, uh, uh, something that looks realistic. So then we come on to uh, another of my favourite tools, and this is the slice tool. The, my favourite one, the one that I'm using here, is the manual uh, pen cutter fits very very nicely in your hand nicely weighted and it's got this fabulous chunky um chisel shaped uh, uh, ceramic blade um now i use it quite a lot to be able to get some sort of like fine details and everything in i don't however use it as a substitute for creating fur so you know the pencil work is incredibly important but the slice tool allows me just to come in and just carve out carve out i'm not carving out that sounds like, like we're making a sculpture or something but you know it, it allows me to come and just scrape out some of the hairs to make it even more realistic and what's brilliant about the slices if you, you can kind of see it working here you create these little grooves in the paper that um, they're like indentations and then the pencil doesn't sit in them um, particularly well they will do if you force them in but um, so it means that you can use your pencil over the top of them and you can create these fan fantastic fine hairs um, you know which is perfect for an ear like this um, and again part of the process you kind of build the ear up you build your shading up you bring the slice tool in a little bit create some of those little stray hairs go back again with your pencils and you can start to bring in some really really fine details so we're talking fine details now um, you know quite a long way into the process but we're starting to build some really really lovely details um, that look like hair. They don't look like, you know, uh, funny pencil marks just sort of o overlapping each other. They look like hair because we've we've concentrated on the uh, on the tones. We've concentrated on the shading, which is so important to be able to kind of capture, um, you know, how the hair kind of lifts up and goes over and and uh, sits on the ear. It's just a, a process you know and and it's understanding how that process works and how you can use different methods and different techniques to to help you now this is um a little friend of mine this is the paper stump uh, it, i don't use it that often i'll have to admit but it is fantastic for those soft edges soft blurry edges around ears you know if something's going off into the distance that kind of thing um you can get different sorts of um paper stumps I quite like the soft ones this one actually I think they call it a tortillon I think and it's it's more of um it's sort of hollow in the middle um but it and, and I use it very very gently so I don't push into the paper at all um I just sort of like dab it on the top just to sort of you know soften the pigment it works brilliantly on pastel matte but softly Again, it's kind of knowing when to bring these elements in. So with a paper stump, I wouldn't bring, um, I wouldn't use that until I've got a good number of layers in, just because um, it, it may well push the pigment deeper into the paper. And, and actually with pastel matte, that can cause it to be even more grainy right from the beginning. So I'd wait a while and get some more, uh, more layers in. And then you can incorporate with the slice tool, with the eraser. Um, your pencils are going to be doing most most of the work um, and uh, you know it's just a case of building up building up building up you can see what we've got going on now um, kind of finish that ear and we're starting to work on the um, on the base of it the challenge here is that um, 
you get to this point and it's like brilliant I've done a fantastic job of the ear and then we get to this this area where the hair starts to come over the top of what we've already done and we can panic a little bit I, I you know I have to admit we can panic it's like oh my god you know how am I going to do this blimey this, this is really hard but you've just got to do exactly the same thing you just build up gradually um, you know get a nice base in and then you can use the tools that you have to hand so you know your eraser um, your magic tape your slice whatever you know you don't have to use those you can see you know you can just use your pencils and your pencils will work incredibly well it might take a little bit longer and it might be a little bit more frustrating to kind of get you know um, all of those areas in but it's it's so doable I mean there's so many people who don't use magic tape or slice tool or anything like that and they just use their pencils and it works brilliantly um, for me you know if I can find something that works and it gives me um, a chance to kind of create something maybe a little bit quicker uh, you know, I'm going to take it. I mean, I'm not for speed, but, um, you know, they that every tool is going to help. Um, so again, you know, we're looking at these little tufty hairs that are coming up over the base of the ear. It's all about the shading. So go slowly, build your layers up really, really slowly. Use your tools to help to create these little sort of flyaway hairs. Um, enjoy the process, enjoy how colour pencils work, um, you know, and um, yeah, you're going to be away. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.